Greetings. So this is the first video lecture of the course Mathematical Foundations. So it's Mathematical Foundations and it's quite important. Foundations, foundations of logic programming, say logic programming and functional programming. Let's say functional programming. Now the important thing here is that it's a math course, so we won't do any coding and it's not actually a problem if you are not really familiar either with logic programming or with um, functional programming. So the, th uh, the thing is that these two uh, programming paradigms are, well, some sort of probably different uh, to those programming languages in which you are probably more familiar with like C++ and Java and the stuff like that they are also called imperative languages and imperative logic and functional is each of these things are quite different so we will have lots of math in this course but the mathematics, which is it will be a mixture of dextrate mathematics and calculus, maybe, maybe. And we will apply this math first to the logic programming part. And then in the second part of the course, we will apply the almost the very same math to the functional programming part. So, of course, there will be a part which is a functional programming only part. So, we will develop methods, have to convert functional programs to math. And then we will apply this framework uh, which we already uh, developed uh, till that point of the course. And before that, we will also have some logic programs some constructs for logic programs and then we will have some transformations how to convert uh, the semantics of these program of these programs sort of to a math notations and we will also uh, we will be able to to apply this uh, very same uh, mathematical machinery which we will develop now we won't do that uh, first math and then only the programming paradigms. So we will just invent these mathematical methods as they are needed and uh, not before they are used as anything. But you are probably not familiar with logic programming. Um, a, a very uh, paramount example is the programming language Prolog. And for the functional part, and a well, a well-known example is Haskell. Now, if you are not really fluent in these languages or don't even know these languages, that's not a problem. I will just show you one or two examples how a program looks in uh, such a programming language. But the important part is to give a denotation or semantics for both of these two paradigms. Now, I should tell you what so the difference so so basically what you've seen is that how um say an informatics student sees a program's meaning and in this course you will learn how a mathematician sees um a source code of a program if you if we can um, talk about source codes so semantics is always semantics semantics of a source code is always something which is roughly translated to behavior of the code. And there are two semantics in general, well, at least two semantics. The first is the so called operational semantics. Operational semantics usually this is the semantics which we or which you uh, which you learn when you learn a programming language this is the step by step semantics step by step 
So it basically says that if the program is in this state, like um, these are the values of the variables, and the next operation, the next statement is i++, which means just increase i by 1, then at the next step everything will be the same, but the value of the variable i just increases by 1, and the program progresses to the next uh, instruction. So that's how usually an operational semantics looks like. So for example, if you have a code like um, in C, I'm assuming that you are probably familiar in C, so it's just int factorial int n is just uh, something like say if n is at most 1 then return 0, uh, return 1. Otherwise, you are just returning, say, n times the factorial of n minus 1. Yeah, so this is basically just computing the factorial function, right? Now, in the operation semantics here, so if you just say that I'll call this factorial for 3, then you are just doing a step-by-step -step simulation of this code. So basically you are just writing that if, if n is smaller than or equal to 1, then return 9. Otherwise it's, it's just... So, so you just transform your code into something like, okay, so now I should return 3 times the factorial of 2. And then after some rewriting steps, you will end up with 3 times 2 plus the factorial of 1. And then you will end up by 3 times 2 times 1. And then you will end up by 6. And that will be the result, the return value. Now, when you are doing this, then you are essentially doing a step-by-step -step rewriting of your original source code. And just keeping track of the variables and such and states of the program and this is what is usually called an operational semantics of a program now the other one is called the other one i will just use red for this guy is usually called denotational semantics denotational semantics And this is basically just give me the meaning of the function, sort of, so to say. So for this code, the denotation and semantics of this particular imperative could, could would be just the n is just mapped to n factorial. And that's it. So basically while the operational semantics cares about how to run your code, the denotation of semantics just um, just just uh, requires you to tell what the code does, what the code computes, what is the function computed by the code. Now, of course, this guy is much harder in practice to compute because, well, here you just have to do some simulation. Here, on the other hand, you just usually have to uh, have to inspect your code and this is quite hard actually so hard that for imperative programming languages like this guy here so it's a C code which means just imperative you are just carrying out instructions one after each other and you have some go-to statements and stuff like that and function calls so it's very hard to give to compute the notation of semantics for a source code so we won't do that Basically, that's why we are just sticking to logic programming and functional programming. So, imperative programming is no, but function programming and logic programming is a yes for computing the denotational semantics. So, basically, that's uh, what the course is about. How should we just give meaning or compute meanings 
the notational semantics, if you wish, for source codes in logic programming and in functional programming, in some sense, automatically. Now, these, the sad news is this won't be an automatic thing because usually you won't have such a neat uh, functions this is a function for m factoria but of course you can implement much much complicated functions which are not always um, computing something which already has some 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 notation for how to compute so while the for for the factorial which is our toy example there is a mathematical function a well-known function for other implementations for other implemented functions you won't necessarily be able to find one single function that ah yes that's that's it what it computes so usually it's much more much much more complex so we'll have to invent new notations for making for creating functions uh, out of our already existing functions so Basically, that's what the course uh, aim is, to give this meaning of a program in these two settings. And in the next video, I will just tell you some news, some uh, notions and notations regarding logic programs. And after we've done that, I will tell you the math, the required math, or at least the basics of the required math for handling these logic programs. Till then, bye-bye.